Okay, so here's our short review of the uh, Ryobi 40 volt um, 20 inch cordless lawnmower. We'll give you the uh, model spec, uh, the specific number in just a minute. But uh, as you can see, there it is. Um, just to so get an idea, there's the side. How exciting. Just so you can see whatever the spec is that you're looking for. There we go. Now what I was looking for was something that's at least uh, 20 inches wide, so it met that specification, and had enough juice to last about 20 minutes. My lawn takes about uh, 35 minutes, so I ordered a second battery with it, and I know that this unit uh, has a second uh, battery storage right up top. Oddly, that storage does not include uh, a connector, which means when it dies I need to physically swap them, but that's hardly a crisis, I don't mind doing that. So let's open this thing up and see what we get. Okay. So I already cut it, but that's all. I have not gone into this yet. All right. Cut it being I broke the uh, plastic seal at the top, and that's it. Okay, so um, this looks pretty straightforward. Um, so I'm just going to pull out a few things. Now, normally what I do is just flip the box over, uh, but I think this one is uh, uh, designed to be taken out a different way. So let's just pull a few of these things out. So that's the charger. Very nice. Super sexy, huh? There we go. Nothing exciting. That's the 40 charger. I don't know what that is. That's probably the battery. Yeah, that's the battery. It's heavy. There we go. And uh, that's the bagger. So, nothing interesting there. Now, that is a discharge gate, I'm guessing. So, I'm just going to put that aside. And uh, let's get the sucker out. So, I think what I do is just pull these out. And then tip it up, and I think that's about it. So let's let's find out. So okay, so all right, that's about it. There we go. Don't want the box. Now let's just pop this sucker down. In Canada, uh, the Home Depot are the only people that sell. They have the exclusive rights to Ryobi. So there you go. There's the charger explanation. Geez, I don't know how to use a charger, so that's fine. And there's the mower, and uh, is there a quick start guide in here? Anything silly? Okay, so it folds out. Ooh, isn't that sexy? A lawnmower centerfold. Woo! Okay, so what does it say here? Yeah, a lot of pictures. Don't care. I'm just going to figure it out. So, let's see what we do here to pop this up. This, there's something that's stopping this. Oh, right there. There's a, uh, you push it in. This one's already popped out, but you push back here. And, oh, come on. There it is. Hold, there it is. Well, that was tough. And then this obviously just extends. Yeah, wow, that's pretty tough. I see there's a little plastic bump here, which is intended to go through for storage, but I don't want to use that. So, yeah, this, this has to be extended the whole way. Okay. So I guess the Jolly Green Giant thing is it. So this thing is, this sucker is tall. So this one doesn't want to clip. Okay. Now let's see if we can, uh, how this works. Yeah, that's clipped in. This clips in, it just did it automatically. Now I know that this unit, I can just lift it up. I've seen that. I played with this in the store for a few seconds. So let's figure out how to put the bagger on. Doesn't look very challenging. So no doubt this lifts up, usually from the bottom of the, yep, there it is, shocker. And then, uh, there you go. Now, I understood that little, that little discharge piece I was showing you before, uh, in some cases, ships in here. Mine, it did not. So just take note of that, but uh, yeah. So this looks like it has, yeah, let me get this on and I'll, show, I'll explain it. There it is. Okay, so there are two, there are, little clipper here a little thing that hangs out and yeah so you just put that on there and you're on your way which I've done and same on the other side and I see I've got to pull this off and clip this plastic in so I'm going to do that right now okay so let's take the bagger off which means lift this up there we go all right and now hook this on obviously not very challenging again there we go so well, of all the mowers I've ever set up in my life, and I'm 
coming up to 51 years old, so I've set up a few mowers in my time. Well, I usually repair them, keep them for a long time. But regardless, I have set up and uh, maintained dozens of mowers over the years, because when I was a kid, I had my own company. But uh, anyway, there we go. So now that's all clipped in. Anyway, of all of the mowers I've ever set up, this is the easiest, I would say, so far. And I have no expectation that that will change. So, yeah, so what i got to do is get these little hooks on those little plastic hooks, which is not very hard to do. So, what I'm going to do is lift this up. Oh, yeah, wow, that is crazy simple. Now, let's look at the, uh, how to get the unit going. Again, I could read the instructions, but yeah, I'm not going to do that. So, there it is. So, I know that that's a, a starting key to make sure that you, uh, yeah, there we go. It says, sorry, I know that that's a starting key, and you can see it actually says starting key right there. Without that in there, it won't start. So if you've got little kids, you can just take that out. Um, I don't much care, so I'm just going to leave it like that for the minute. Um, that's where the spare battery goes, and that is where the live battery goes. And uh, from what I recall, this is your depth gauge right here, how deep you want it. I know in my case, I want it to be... I want it to be up a fair amount, so I'm going to set it there. It says one to four inches. Uh, four inches is, whew, that's serious. So I'll set mine to about two, about halfway. And um, now I think I have to charge up the battery, and I'll come back and I'll show you how it works. I'll see you in just a minute. Okay, so while I'm waiting for this to charge a little bit, uh, and I'm certain that the uh, system says to... Uh, charge it up first before you use it. By the way, you don't have to uh, charge it up. I'm positive that you don't actually have to charge it up and that you don't have to worry about overcharging. All of these modern lithium ion batteries have circuits that protect overcharging. So don't be panicky about, about that. You never have to drain it the whole way. You never have to do any of that stuff anymore. Anyway, so this is my workbench and uh, with all of my tools and this nicely fits right here. So I'm going to mount that sucker right there, and I'm going to take my other Ryobi tool right there, my other 18-volt uh, uh, charger, and I'm going to mount it as well. Now, uh, to show you how I do that, it's pretty straightforward. On the bottom, there are several mounting points, or two mounting points, and I'm just going to put uh, screws in in the right place and then pop it in and slide it down, and that will mount it. Now, one of the things to note is that, um, and I, I don't know whether this is the same in the States, but in Canada, uh, Ryobi product, uh, because it's exclusive to Home Depot, they have a deal that the warranty is, on the batteries is forever. You don't even need a receipt. So this battery, for instance, died on me some time ago, and I went into the uh, went into Home Depot, and they said, no, we don't do it. Ryobi does it. So go down to the Ryobi shop, or the company that had been contracted to do that. And um, I thought, yeah, this is a waste of my time. But it wasn't. I walked in. The guy said, you have it, you have it registered? And I said, no. And he said, well, if it was registered, we'd swap it for you right away. But because you don't have it registered, you have to wait. We have to ship it in, make sure it's dead. Then, then we ship. Then they ship you another one. And that's exactly what happened. So another reason to buy Ryobi. Um, uh, I always thought Ryobi was kind of a crappy brand. Uh, but with that warranty, I thought, oh, I'll give it a shot. Now we own a pile of Ryobi uh, equipment. And... Um, I haven't had a single failure other than that battery, and they warrantied it years after with no receipt. So, it's good for me. Anyway, I'm going to mount this thing now. And that one's mounted. I also mounted my other one. I'll just show you how I did that. It's not very challenging. There's a couple of uh, mount points here. And I eyeball things. I don't bother to measure them. Not worth the effort. So, uh, I put one in. I know that the distance is halfway between here, so I took my measuring tape, measured that, popped one in, put it on, then I eyeballed where the second one was, I made it a little high, so I lowered it, and whoop de doo now we're good. So now I just have to pop this on, which will take a second. There, now both of them are on. It's nice and tight. This one's nice and tight as well. I'll get a zip tie, tie those on, run them along here, and we'll be happy. All right, so we'll be back in a minute. Now we've got it mounted. I'll let that charge a little bit. Oh, before I let you go again, in case you're wondering, I just used number six, inch and a half, Robertson's. Okay, so this is the battery that shipped. It is heavier than the battery I bought. I have a feeling that that is not as uh, many amps as the other one, but I can't find a number on it. So 
I guess we're going to find out. So let's take these out, and put them in, and put them in the machine. It's pretty exciting! All right. So, lift up. This is just a, I, you don't have to slide this in, but I'm going to on principle. There we go, it's not actually connected to anything. So this one you can see there's connectors there and connectors there. Whoops, you can't see that, there you go. And that just slides in. There it is. Now there's something back here and I don't know what that is. I'll have to look at the manual to figure out what that is. Um, but uh, anyway, right now it's just an empty slot and maybe that's just for some other product in some other territory. Okay, so then there's a the question of how you start it. So you think you would pull a safety bar and then try to start it up, but no, that's not how you do it. You push the start button and then, whoops, pull the safety bar. And there it is. Yeah, by the way, that is explained clearly right there. Uh, also, there's not a switch for the headlights as far as I can tell. The headlights are on whether you'd like them or not. Um, anyway, that's it. This machine seems great. If you have any questions or concerns, please get a hold of us at uh, URTech.ca. Thank you. Bye-bye.